Okay. So, any questions as we go along, please just drop them in the in the chat alongside. And we'll begin today's live flow through, flow through, and a sharing of what inner child healing is, how impactful it's been in my personal journey, and a basic underview or an overview, depending on how we like to view things, of what it is. So throughout our educational development, from the moment we're born, we are programmed. The easiest way to look at ourselves is a bit like a computer. We're born blank and we have various programs installed upon the operational system, which is the subconscious mind. The subconscious mind, it runs about 95% of our life. So most of what we do, we do at a subconscious level. We're not actually aware of what we do. Between the ages of about naught and seven, we are like sponges. We're receiving information and we just keep receiving that information. The subconscious mind doesn't have an understanding of truth or false outside of what it takes to be true. So as an example, if we're told that we're no good, that we're stupid, that we're ugly, whatever it might be by a primary caregiver, especially whilst growing up, we will take that to be true that will get locked into our subconscious belief system. And then we will actually act according to that belief. Between about the ages of seven and 14, we take all the information that we've received between naught and seven and start to create our personal view of the world. So the expression, believe you can or believe you can't in either way you're right, that fits perfectly into this space because the way, again, we are educated and raised to believe ourselves capable that is what we are then able to experience moving forwards. Inner child healing in a basic principle is an understanding that in each and every one of us, there is a child that still lives within us. Dependent on our personal journey and our limiting beliefs or negative programs will depend on our personal inner child healing journey. The inner child wants to explore, it wants to be playful, it wants to be sporadic, it wants to move and to, to skip and to sing and to be expressive. In my personal journey, my inner child was crushed. Any form of artistic flair, any form of expression that was slightly feminine in nature was, was crumpled and crushed by my my father growing up so I learned to stay very masculine to, to keep quite small and quite quiet and my journey led me to fully disconnect from any feeling of joy or any feeling of worth in my life because again I was programmed into believing that I was to use use the word my dad used to call me a silly little cunt growing up as a way of almost being quite playful it was a way he would just be oh it's all right it's all right, you silly little cunt. He didn't mean anything negative by it. He's since called my youngest son on two occasions. He said to him, you look like a crackhead. First occasion, because my son has quite drawn in eyes. And if he's tired, he, his eyes look quite dark. First time he was about six. And we were all so shocked. Like, we didn't quite know what to do. And my son asked me why. And I said, I don't know. It's what he's like don't don't take any notice of it the second time was about a year ago and when my dad said it to me i looked at him and i said no that is not okay you do not talk to my son like that and i just completely cut him energetically and in that moment i broke an ancestral pattern that would otherwise have been passed down to to my son and to his son and understanding that an authoritative male figure could talk to us in whatever way and that there would be nothing done about it. So I, in that moment, believed that I took away a potential program that my son would have had to work through when he was older. Anytime perhaps he looked tired and that voice comes back in of his grandfather saying, you look like a crackhead. That is the sort of belief that if taken by somebody and infused and installed at a subconscious level would actually undermine our ability to 
to put ourselves out there in the world. Well, I, I'm not going to go for that job or I'm not going to try to approach that person that I'm attracted to because I'm ugly or because I'm not worthy or because I look like a crackhead, etc. So inner child healing is going back to discover the root cause of any negative belief or limiting program that is operating in the subconscious mind still today. To go back to my own journey and being about 10, 11, and this is part of, had a documentary made of my life um, because of the impact of this interaction and this relationship with my father. Um, it's won seven awards. It's done really well. And we're now in talks with mine to get it released through the charity to create more of a an understanding of the impact of the way that we talk to our children, basically. So when I was about 10, I sung very high vocally, expressively in the back of my dad's car to a spy or a Mel C's song. And it was, I run to you. So I'm there singing, I run to you. And he turned around and he's like, shut up, you little faggot. And told me to shut up, called me a faggot because I was aware of his hatred towards anything that was not PC, anything out slightly out there, slightly, slightly feminine in nature, any sort of femininity in a man, he would absolutely crush. So to be called a faggot by my dad, it was crippling to me. And I, as a defense mechanism, because again, the subconscious mind, its highest and truest directive is to protect and serve the body. In that experience, what my subconscious mind believed best to protect and serve my body through was to take away all feeling of feminine expression, to close it down and to then go through life until really coming into this journey. I used to look at the floor and I would talk like this. And, it was, it was, and it's only if somebody say, what? what? What are you saying? I'd be like, uh, no, it doesn't matter. Oh, no. Because if I actually express myself, I might be shamed by my father, which would be so traumatic to me that my way of preventing that shame moving forwards was to close all down my my form of expression to the point I couldn't even read a, a line out of a book in front of the class. Or... And I went like this. Everything is energetics consciously created. So in my belief system, I believe that any form of expression and any form of femininity was was potentially, to take it to the nth degree, life-threatening. Obviously, I wasn't under threat of my life being taken, but to see the way that my father would behave towards people of a homosexual tendency or nature... And to be around that energy and that presence, I was very fearful as a child. So to protect myself, I shut down all expression. This is the typical sort of way that the subconscious mind protects us from experiencing trauma because out of sight, out of mind. But at the same time, what the subconscious mind had done was taken part of myself, that 10-year-old Cain, taken that per version of me, placed it into a little dark black box and pushed it to the very back of my consciousness, out of sight, out of mind. That version of me is then lost. And I am then on this journey of trying to find completion within myself with external possessions or achievements or connections with other people. And this feeling of being lost and something missing inside ourselves that we're all on this journey to try to reclaim externally is actually a part of ourself that we have separated or splintered off a conscious element of ourself that is then locked in space and time. Inner child healing is going back under a hypnotic state Asking the subconscious mind, as an example, when was the first time that you decided you couldn't express yourself freely? The subconscious mind, knowing all information across all space and time, the subconscious mind stores every interaction and every situation we've ever been part of. It is always learning. It is always open and receiving. And it always takes what it receives to be true. If I said or I thought that person is stupid, what my subconscious mind hears is stupid. 
I will start to vibrate in accordance to stupid and I will start to behave and act stupid. So again, it's an understanding that when we hear certain things growing up, the subconscious mind takes it to be true. And not until we set ourselves free from a feeling of victimization or repression from our parents, which again is one of the first steps through inner child work. There is a course that we've just uploaded, literally put the final touches to today. It starts off obviously with an introduction to inner child healing, and then it moves into self-worth reconnection. It's reconnecting to our self-worth. When we feel worthy of them being able to experience more happiness, more joy, more abundance, more, more love in life, we actually allow for that to be experienced. We open back up and we allow for that frequency to be attracted to us. Because again, in my experience, I was told love is weak and you are a man and you must be strong. So in the past, any form or feeling of love, again, was a form of weakness to the point where I completely separated from love. I became 18 stone of muscle and rage and anger, trying to basically be accepted by my dad to be approved of. And it wasn't really until I got to the darkest point in my journey where I gave up. I gave up on who it was I thought I was, my place in society, my, my dreams, my desires, all very material, all very ego-based. And I wanted to actually die going into complete darkness was the first time that i was then able to see which direction the light was coming from and through meditation start to really reconnect and rediscover truths to myself that had been hidden behind walls or mirrors in order to again protect myself from that version of myself that 10 year old me that was traumatized and shamed by my father, he believed what he was told. He felt shameful about that situation and that shame and the guilt even of actually expressing myself in that manner and potentially negatively affecting my father even, that is what was the most limiting potential effect of it is the shame that we carry. When we experience something as a child, we believe that we deserve to experience it because why else would we experience it? Why else would we be told that we're no good or told that something is wrong, even if we deep down don't believe it to be true? The subconscious mind and compounded over and over in time will take it to be true. It's the rule of three. The subconscious mind does something Let's say there's a dangerous situation. We have the opportunity to run, to freeze or to fight. My way of, again, being educated and raised was to fight. If there's potential danger, you, you fight. You deal with the danger before it escalates into danger was actually the way I was told. So it's almost like, again, that subconscious programming over time, I would walk into a room, I would project myself to be the biggest guy in there, I would look around, I'd find the next biggest guy, and I would go over and I would have some form of confrontation to deal with the situation before it arose. But actually, all I was doing was creating that exact situation. Because subconsciously, my way of learning to keep myself safe was to be big and angry and hostile. It wasn't again until I realized that that program was there, that I could go back to do the work to release myself from the program, to know that I am, I have always been and I am safe. I am good enough. I am loved. I am et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it's these I am statements that the subconscious mind is able to infuse and then recreate new belief systems and new programs from that old experience. So we can't change the physical past, but we can change our memory and our connection to it. The traumatic experiences that I went through, that I experienced as a child growing up, previously where there would be a reason to kind of feel limited or lacking or victimized in life. What I would do, but it's my dad's fault, or I would do, but it's my mum's fault. It's realizing that actually I am responsible for myself. And that, again, is what inner child healing is 
able to bring us. It's a feeling of responsibility so that instead of reacting to a situation, we can respond to react again, going back to a computer. Let's say that a program is installed upon F12. If somebody comes along and pressed F12 on me today, if that program was first installed when I was say eight years old, the program would actually run and I would experience the event again as though it was taking place to the eight year old self today. I wouldn't go through the experience and, and respond as a conscious sentient being of today. I would respond or I'd react from that old conscious space. So it's almost as though the body because of the subconscious minds. Hi, everyone. Hello. Rue, is that? Hello. <laughs> so the subconscious mind, it can, right, I've lost my track of thought there. It's, is knowing, is coming back to an understanding that everything is programming. What we experience as a child, if that energy emotion, that feeling is allowed to be felt and to be flowed through, if somebody said to me today, you're a broccoli, I would say, okay, it's an interesting perspective. I have no connection to that being true. That, that belief, that thought is in and it's out. If somebody called me a cunt today, to again, to use that word, that horrible vulgar word that I used to be called, it would come in and it would go out because there's nowhere for it to attach to anymore. There's no belief of it being true anymore. In the past, when I was again, young 20s, if somebody called me that word, I would go red, I would miss out and I would come back round with destruction all around me. The reason that I did that, again, when I went back to discover why, it was because all of that pain, all of that anger, all of that hostility that my father would put upon me, that I could do nothing about as a child, would all come out as an adult. So it wasn't really that I was attacking that person. I was attacking every previous version of my father that had ever wronged me and called me that name because it was locked in my psyche, it was locked in my being, it was locked inside myself energetically. So the way to look at ourselves energetically here is a bit like a river. And if somebody chucks rubbish into the river, if the river has no connection to that rubbish, the rubbish will just flow through. If there is a root sticking out of a tree into the bank, or there is some sort of sharp object sticking out of the river, and that rubbish is in this in alignment consciously and energetically to that pollutant, that piece of rubbish will get stuck on that that stick, that root, that that spike. And it will then collect up more and more rubbish of the same frequency until in our energetic self there is a blockage, which will then in turn in time create sorts of disease within the body. The way that we can change these programs is literally by going back to revisit the experience through our lenses of perception today. Because what, if my dad, if I started singing expressively to a, a song in a feminine expression today, and I had no history of anything in the past, and he's like, shut up, you faggot, I'd go, fuck off, you cunt. Doesn't matter. It would mean nothing to me. It's only because of the previous trauma it's hidden and then compounded over time that things affect us so deeply as adults these days. And I'm sure that we've all heard the expression like you're acting like a child. And that is exactly what happens. That's why we act like children at times. It's because that childlike self has actually been reanimated. And instead of responsibly responding to the situation, we react to the situation as though we were that traumatized child again. So that's a little bit of an overview of inner child healing. <laughs> Alicia's left. That's that's absolutely beautiful. Thank you. 
So how is that as an overview? Did that give everybody a bit of an understanding of what inner child healing is? Thank you. And that is how, as I say, we can change the neurological pathways in the brain. So neurons that fire together, wire together. And we will always take the path of least resistance. The subconscious mind will always take the path of least resistance. And it actually skips things out. It, it takes shortcuts and it cheats, if you like. So if we expect something, we would actually look for that thing. And then we will confirm what it is we believe by denying everything else and attaching to the one element that confirms that belief. So if we say that somebody is, thank you, Ruth, if we believe somebody is negative, if we believe somebody is going to be repressive or difficult, or there's going to be some sort of conflict, in order to protect ourselves from that conflict, what the subconscious mind will do again is scan the situation and looking for that conflict. When we find it, it confirms the program, and then we go, yeah, I knew I was going to be right. That is also connected to the egoic aspect of self because the ego must remain the mighty ego. And any form of undermining of a belief that we are all-knowing, the ego will do everything it can to protect from that situation. It's the reason for all isms. Again, I was raised to be ism to the extreme in every area. And it wasn't until I started to educate myself in other religions other cultures other 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 ways of viewing ourself in society and in in life in general really that i was no longer ignorant to another religion i was then no longer fearful of that other religion because it wasn't something that i didn't understand or understand so therefore i could accept that religion or that culture or that person and that's what Again, inner child healing is all about acceptance. It's about accepting the things, the situations that took place in the past. It's about accepting everybody that was part of that situation. Because again, to simplify it, without a villain, there is no superhero. Without my father ridiculing and repressing me growing up, I wouldn't have gone on the journey that I went on and I would have potentially stood beside him and actually walked his path, which would have rounded me up in prison alongside him. And I wouldn't be the man that I am today doing the work that I am today. So it's knowing that everything happens for a reason and it's being able to go back to those previous traumatic events to look at the situation through our eyes today to gain the information required from the event to let go of the negative program and limiting belief created around that event, and then to actually energetically bring that inner child back home to ourself, completing ourself with ourself. It's the only way in my experience that we are able to create cognitive completion and a feeling of energetic completion. That feeling of something missing, of something being void, of something not quite right, we know in the back of our mind, we know. So then it's asking ourselves, questioning ourselves, sitting in meditation, or if we do react to a situation in a less than mindfully chosen way, and we're a bit embarrassed or ashamed, or we've done something and we know that it's limiting in some way, then we ask ourselves, why? Why, why did I do that? Why did I behave that way? Where is this coming from? And if we ask in meditation, we'll be shown a glimpse of a situation. So of course, I behave like that in that situation, because when I was six, that happened and I learned this as a defense mechanism. Of course. OK, of course, I spoke by like this for such a long time because I was staying safe. It was a way of keeping myself safe. So it's very, very interesting to myself, at least, the way that the subconscious mind works, the programs which are installed and created. And as I say, inner child healing work could also be referred to as shadow work within the spiritual community. 
but it's not about some demonic dark energy or entity existing within us yes there may be heavy negative energy negative energy because that energy has never been allowed to flow through again an emotion is energy in motion it comes in it goes out it's only when we deny the emotion that it becomes stuck inside us we push it down we repress it we put more things on top of it and then sometimes people go through their entire life holding on to energetics that they experienced in childhood shadow work in a child work is about going into the darkness and shining a light into the darkness but not to vanquish demons because that spitting hissing demon that some people refer to and can see is a version of ourselves again that is locked in time and space that was demonized that was wrong that was shamed and that has done nothing but exist in isolation so if you go near to something if you go near to a creature that's feeling wounded and victimized and left alone in the darkness all of its life it will probably start hissing and spitting at you to stay safe so we shine our attention upon those areas that were previously existing in the darkness and we illuminate them we illuminate the learnings and the treasures that are found in that aspect in that inner child in that shadow element because as well as the trauma being locked away there is also the learnings that that experience brought us being locked away. We still took the learnings as we went forward in life, but we are not subconsciously and thus consciously aware of these. So again, as a brief overview of inner child healing, it's likened to changing the operational system on a computer. When we are born, we have these programs installed. And if we continue to repeatedly operate those programs throughout our life, well, it would be like running the same programs on a computer 40, 50 years later. There are new programs available. There are new mindfully chosen and beneficial ways of viewing ourself and our space and our place in society and then being able to live accordingly. So it's investing in the most important element in our life if you like which is the operational system the subconscious mind again knowing it runs 95 percent of our lives if there are only a couple of negative programs in that space they're going to massively affect everything we experience consciously thank you all. any questions at all on any of that please <laughs> No. I I was going to say whether the dog or if can hear me over the dog barking, but uh, I know in the last ten years I've had to dig out quite a lot of mine. Not you know it's 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 hard in it. <laughs> it's hard, and like you say, you didn't. I didn't know that they were there up until I would say being about thirty four. That's ten yeah. years ago, and then I started to think, why do I behave like that? What is that about? Or you know and um. Yeah. yeah, like I've got like abandonment things because my family splintered when I was young. My sister died, mum and dad split up, oh, that was it, done. Like, so, and then I learned to be like, you know, my logic. And and mm -hmm. I, I, when did I get triggered the other week? I was somewhere and someone turned around and said, shh, to me at the <laughs> which was kind of like, okay, fair enough. We've probably been a bit loud. But then when they turned around and did it again, but it wasn't me. I wasn't talking, but someone had said it again, and I just went, Fuck. and it was just this instinct of, of, and I thought, I've not done something like that since I was like in my thirties to kind of get really like, you know, like the, the bolting in me came out. But I, I, you know, again, it's that I had to learn to be, or I didn't have to learn, but I did learn to be defensive in a mm -hmm. kind of, you know, nobody mess with me kind of way because mm -hmm. I, I felt on my own, you know. 100%. And then um, when you were talking, it's, it it makes me like sad, you know. But it's it, it, we have to dig it out, don't we? And and kind of feel like you said, feel it, and it's 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 hard. Yes. Just like share that anyway. <laughs> thank you, thank you. It's so for for as a reflection is did did you ask yourself as to why being told to be quiet was such a trigger? 
I was I was thinking whilst you were talking where that's come from really and I think probably from school again feeling quite always being told to be quiet like yeah. when I don't want to be quiet you know so that if people have met me it's probably one of the most difficult things I am quite vocal, you know, but I'm not in other ways. I can be quite introverted, but um, and maybe for my dad, you know, we always have to blame, you know, it's not blaming the purposes, but mm-hmm. um, my dad always, oh, yeah, we've had enough of that now, or, you know, and he'll still do it to me now. He'll kind of go, okay, because he, cause he doesn't understand me and he doesn't understand what I'm saying. And even to this day, he'll go, oh, I've had enough of that now, or I'll be quiet now. So it's always that kind of like, you know, you learn to kind of, yeah, I shut up. So may, maybe from that meal, I was just yeah. But I I only, I only thought that whilst I was listening to you talking because I was I was really thinking yeah, why right. do I do that? Why does that trigger me like like that? It, it undermines your feeling of authority in your own in your own experience. So being talked to like that by a parent would revert mm. us back to feeling like we are the child being spoken to by the parent it would feel less as though we were two conscious adults having a conversation and more again, like they're the, they're the superior and we are meant to do what we're told. Do as I tell you, not as I do was what my dad used to say to me. And that as a program, that as a belief, he doesn't speak to me like that anymore. We are, I went to see him last week and he's doing very well we meet each other he knows that i'm not gonna support and uplift his barbarism he's still very much like fucking 100 miles an hour and i'm like yeah i see you dad but i'm not feeding into that not doing it so he then actually slightly adjusts himself when he's around me and we kind of meet in the middle which is which is perfect it's beautiful and it is an understanding that anything that we do that is lacking, like if there's any, if there is a, a lot of my experiences growing up were uh, traumatic, were sexual based. And I had this deep undercurrent of a fear of highly sexual and attractive women. So oh, you're attractive and you're sexual towards me. Fuck shit. Hide and go all weird because of previous experiences growing up when I was way younger than I should have been in any space and that developed over time as a fear and then to counterbalance the fear and this is the most recent deep program that I've been working through to counterbalance that fear I would then want to control the woman so that instead of feeling controlled by her I'm going to sexually control you And then there's this undercurrent of a feeling that the whole thing is contorted and distorted and it's not even something I really want to be part of. But if I have to be part of this, I'm going to make sure that I'm in control, not that I feel controlled. And again, that was my way of protecting the inner child. So that was my inner child when I was about eight, that that trauma was experienced. And then about my 14-year-old self, came in to protect the eight-year-old self. And then it would be the 14-year-old self that would be operating in situations even when I was in my 30s. It would actually be the 14-year-old self that would come out to protect the eight-year-old self because it's the 14-year-old self that first learned to protect the eight-year-old self. Now, to have since having gone back, the 30-year-old, 32-year-old self worked through it freed the 14 year old self as the protector because no longer is the 14 year old self required to protect the eight year old self because the eight year old self is safe. He's learned everything he needs to learn from the situation to know that he was safe, that he is safe. And it's being able to then let go of that feeling of victimization. It doesn't change what's happened and we never forget what's happened, but we don't need to forgive when we accept Every situation, every interaction, every conversation, every brush stroke on the canvas of a piece of artwork is what creates that artwork. I wouldn't be me today if it wasn't for every single interaction. And I love the person I am today. And it's been a very difficult, very fucking... I've wanted to run away more than I can tell you. 
from situations there's being able to sit there and to say to to our younger self little lisa little terry little ruth little carly little kane i see you you're okay you're safe i keep you safe i keep myself safe and that again is a mantra that i spent a very long time working with and embodying is that i keep myself safe thank you ruth yes this literally it's the third time today interestingly so do as i say not as i do little girls are meant to be seen not heard they both come and the truth in this is ruth little girls are supposed to be heard as well as seen and little girls are appreciatively received in their expression by people that are able to receive them whenever our caregivers whenever somebody tells us that we're not supposed to be heard that we're stupid that we don't feel loved or good enough by them i never felt loved by my dad well okay but it wasn't because i was unlovable it's because he didn't know how to love because he doesn't love himself and his realizations like that and you're like fuck okay so actually it wasn't that i was never good enough it wasn't that i wasn't able to be the son that he always wanted and the only way of being him feeling slightly proud of him me was when i was a fucking tank and i walked in to visit him in prison and he's like oh that's my son oh, okay that's my son walking in like this all right dad and that was the moment one time in my life where i felt proud he he i felt that he was proud of me since going on this journey and since him going on his own journey inside he got caught importing 40 million pound worth of cocaine and got given 28 years served 14 and he's out, been out a couple of years now he's on probation for another 12 or so he became buddhist to a degree and the greatest it still like sends shivers through me he said to me a couple of months ago he's like have you thought about just focusing on you I was like, what do you mean he's like well just forget everybody else i know you want to help other people but fuck all them just do you because I truly believe where you are consciously, I think that the things that you see and connect to and come out with, it goes in beyond the Buddha's teachings. And I think if you just focused on you and you just meditated, I think you be could become enlightened. You could become a Buddha. Sad. That's the greatest compliment you could ever give me because it's Buddhism that got him through prison. He found God, as it were, through Buddhism. He found himself. And again, that, in my view is this awakening journey is this reconnection to our truth is finding that we are the creator of our own reality that we're not a victim that we're not a traumatized little child that needs to shut up and do as they're told when somebody reanimates that feeling it's an understanding that if we are in a controlling or negative relationship that it is an echo of the relationship that we learned as children we go through life repeating all the experiences we had as children and repeating it as though we are still wearing those same shoes and that same hat. The same process is experienced inside ourselves because the same belief system is there running that same program. Again, F2, F12 has got a program on, press F12, the program runs. Unless we question F12, go, why did I behave like that? We're not going to know that there is a program there. And then we can go in, as I say, under very controlled situations and conditions in a light hypnotic state to do timeline therapy to allow the subconscious mind to learn what it needs to learn from the event to let go of the event. And then we free ourselves from it. That root in the river is removed, that spike, and then the pollutants just flow through and they wash away. Energy in motion it's all just energy. There is no good or bad. We have just decided it is bad because it's through a negative traumatic experience. And we've locked that darkness, that badness inside ourselves. When we let go of it, 
the universe takes it, breaks it down, cleans and cleanses it, and recycles it and redistributes it somewhere new. So actually, when we do our own inner healing work, we are positively affecting ourselves as well as everything else because we are releasing that negative energy so they can be used positively again. Personally, it's what's changed my entire reality in a child healing. It's been a journey, and it's one that, as I say, I'm still on. I'm coming to the end of my sexual healing process, which has been the most relevant and recent experience, and honouring, truly honouring the feminine, which, again, starts inside. So the honouring of my feminine is being able, went to a fancy uh, party at the weekend, and there was loads of makeup because there was girls there and I've got my nails done and I had eyelashes on and and it's like yeah hi darling and that's the thing that I I am very expressive I'm very artistic I'm very flamboyant and feminine in nature and I'm allowed to express that again now because I have set that version of myself free and it's the understanding that actually it wasn't imprisoned previously by my dad it was me that created that prison. It was my subconscious mind trying to protect and serve the body that took that version of me and put it away. So then it's up to me to go back, to discover that box, to bring it to the front, to open it up, Pandora's box, if you ask me, and to bring that shadow back into the light, to integrate that inner child back into the, the self of today. That's it. That's the inner child healing journey in, in a nutshell, really. It is, as I say, beyond words, impactful and transformative. And if there is anything I can ever do to reflect back any questions that you have um, after today or moving forward, so at any point in the future, then just message me and it would be more than an honor. I just, it is, I, I, there is what it is. Words sometimes escape me when I actually tune into honest the the man i was and how i had i'd condemned myself to a life of pain and misery i hated the world people smiled i wanted to rip their face off because it it reminded me of how fucking unhappy and broken i was and this work you know, not every day is sunshine and unicorns and rainbows. I think it's love and light with a little bit of darkness and fright because we need both to really understand or experience the other. But I love life. I love me. I love what I do. It's a gift to get up in the in the morning, to rise to meet the day. Not even using the word morning now. It's all about the language, again, that we use. I am being the most powerful so if there is an I am that comes up over the next few days for any of you that you feel is negative or limiting, ask yourself, question it. Is that true? I'm no good. I'm stupid. I'm worthless. Okay. Is that true? I hear you voice. Is that true? Well, yeah. Or do I know it to be true? Do I know it to be 100% factually true? Hmm. Yeah, maybe not. Okay. So what would it feel like if it wasn't true? Hmm. I don't know. Would you like to see what it feels like if it wasn't true? What would you choose? If you could choose for it to be true or not true, what would you choose? Well, not true. Well, let's run with that for a, a day or so. We've run this program where it's true unknowingly for our entire life. So how about we put that one down just for a couple of days and we run the program where I am good enough and I am capable and I am fearless and I am worthy. How about we run that program? Mm, okay. Yeah. And it's just allowing ourselves to feel safe enough to take those small steps to begin with. If you do ever want to do any form of cognitive reframing of timeline therapy, then again, the course has just gone up, which is a really powerful and beautiful space to start. And it would bring you from a complete let's say beginner's space in inner child healing right through to actually being able to go on a full journey of integration of your inner child to go back to discover the root cause of your unnecessary and unwanted fear because again certain things are actually required fear is is a requirement 
fear is necessary to not step in front of a bus, let's say. Oh, it's just a bus. I'm not scared of that. Bang. Well, we're dead. So it's useful to be scared of stepping in front of a bus. But we remove the unnecessary and unwanted elements of whatever it might be, of anxiety, of fear, of whatever program that is limiting. So my kind of little cherry on the cake, as it were, to bring a kind of a closure to what it is that's been expressed and shared through me and my journey through this space before I'd like to see if you have any more questions is really just to question ourselves, to question your belief system, to question whether F12 is really F12 or whether it was a learned safety protocol at some point in the past to keep ourselves from trauma, safe from trauma and whether actually that trauma is still present or whether we can choose to responsibly change our belief system around that situation, around ourselves, around that event. If any of you are particularly affected by your parents' view of yourselves, then I would very, very strongly suggest that you do a cord cutting exercise, which again is part of the inner child healing course. So if you were to want to take the whole course, it's lesson number three. But in principle, every interaction, every conversation that we have creates an energetic connection. If we think of somebody that said something 10 years ago, and that still animates a feeling of victimization or of, of hurt inside ourselves, then we are still giving that situation, that person power over our happiness. If we cut energetic connections, which is something, again, that I would start my clients after self-worth, it's a disconnection from our parents. What it does is we disconnect and there will be a particular feeling and a particular color of the connection it will look like a a bit like a hose that connects from a particular chakra of ours to theirs and when we cut it we then create a new mindfully chosen and beneficial connection of two conscious sentient beings so no longer do we expect them to be our mother and to be able to be the superhero that we needed as a child that was never able to deliver we accept them as the adult, as the being they are, with their own programs, with their own flaws, with their own situations. We know that they did the best they could with the information they had at their disposal at the time. And we connect to them as a conscious, sentient adult ourselves. So when we look at them, we don't feel as though we're a child and they're an adult. And when they look at us, they don't look at us as a child and feel as though they're superior and they're in charge. We disconnect that old that viewpoint, that energetic and conscious connection, and then we choose to mindfully create a new one. By choosing to mindfully create the new connection from heart to heart ourselves, it means the connection has been made and they can't come in and reconnect in future without our knowing. Powerful stuff. Honestly, incredibly powerful stuff, all of this. So does anybody have any more questions? before we bring close to this evening, please. Thank you, Ruth. <laughs> and I'm I'm disappointed as well that the audio has not worked and we've not been able to hear you either. Thank you for persisting. It's this, this level of persistence that we need. What is the inner voice? In what regards do you mean, sorry? So we have the inner voice that whispers is our intuition, is what will always guide us towards our highest and greatest, our truest, towards our destiny. The voice that shouts is the voice of the ego, and it's there to keep us safe. Don't go over there because it's dangerous. Okay, I hear you, ego. Subconscious mind and programming that is there to keep me safe. Yes, I remember when I was six, I went in a river and I thought I was going to drown and it was really traumatic. But I am now 37 and I'm a very strong swimmer and going in the river that only comes up to my knees, I'm perfectly safe in. So actually, I hear you, ego, but let's give it a try anyway because I keep myself safe. 
subconscious mind doesn't communicate it receives it's like it's like a wax tablet that's constantly taking notes and then we'll play that tune in the background again let's very briefly look at the law of attraction if we have been raised to watch channel two again i i was tuned into rage to anger so everywhere i went i was i was playing angry channel so i was angry so i project the anger externally and then i would create and attract to me situations to make me angry to confirm and convince myself that i deserve to be angry i'm supposed to be angry because look at all these things to make me angry tuning into the frequency of acceptance and then love it's like well if something happens now i know it happens for me not to me so i can accept it and let it go by and then i can remain in that frequency of love and in that frequency of love i attract things and situations to me to show me love, not anger. Did that, as a splurge of information there, did that kind of touch on uh, what it was you wanted to know about the inner voice? Thank you. Thank you. Kylie, anything else that you would like to touch upon this evening before we, we close this beautiful connection now? No, just thank you so much. I, that that's why I hopped on because uh, I've I've listened to Kane's meditations and uh, it's it's very very powerful stuff. And I I think especially for a man, I don't know what you mean like hey, a man, but it's it, I think it's harder. I think it's as a skill set to be able to do what you've done is uh, it's it's a strength. It's it's a strength for anybody to do it. But I think uh, you know women have more of a web thinky emotional kind of you know if we're gonna do it i don't know what you just said but for i think it's difficult for that programming for men and we see that like a lot out there so just thank you my love thank you thank you yeah I, I would i would say that the the biggest transformation in this and being able to do this work is connecting to the feminine it is the feminine energy within me it is the the fluidity the the joy the passion the determination and the way again to refer it back to a river the the river bed and the bank is the masculine it provides direction it provides structure it provides support it is the water that is the feminine it is the life it is the fluidity it is the movement it is the joy and interestingly if you think of a river that hasn't yet reached its destination which all rivers lead back to the ocean eventually they take different paths and twist and turn and etc cetera, etc cetera. But if we had the ocean and the river was only here and it still needed to make its way to the ocean, it would actually be the feminine that chooses the direction. And as a man, to sit with this, to be shown this, and to fully embody that truth means that I exist in a state of surrenderance in everything I do. The man and the masculine, the river banks and the bed, they provide structure and direction, yes, but they can't move past where they are. It is the water and the movement of the water which turns away the earth in front of it and creates the movement, and then the bank instantly creates around it. So the more feminine that we are able to become within ourselves, not to the extremism of obviously the demasculinization project that seems to be well, slowly slowing down in my view present, but the more that we're able to to express our truth, to be a beautiful man, Kylie, which is now what I call myself, to be beautiful is to be you to the full. To be you to the full is what it means to be beautiful. And that is to live happy, wild and free. And that came to me again through mirror work and calling myself beautiful. And then it just fucking clicked. And I was like, man, I've been living a full fat fuck yes or it's a no life. I've been honoring myself and I've been treating myself as the most important person in my life and and i'm fucking beautiful and that word beautiful it hit me in that moment differently and that is now really the foundation of everything i'm bringing to the world is to be you to the full it's time to fucking stand up and to be you to the full to be the you that you were born to be to live happy wild and free and that's it in a nutshell <laughs> thank you all oh, for joining me you. this evening joining us Thank you, Carly. Thank you. 
And yeah, as I say, if there's any more information any of you would like, then please just let us know. Course is up there now. Again, if this is something that somebody else would perhaps be interested in, would this be able to be viewed as a replay? As a how is it going to work moving forwards? Yeah, if you want to, it's totally up to you, um, my love, Kane, because I've it records automatically, but it's okay. totally up to you, your your space. Oh, so I'll, I'll, we can upload it into the into my space, whatever it is. Not the old yeah. fashioned my space, but <laughs> I know I always say my space as well. Yeah, your space, my space, real space. space. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, yeah. If you want to, yeah, to totally, I can do that. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, thank you, everybody. Lisa, Terry, Ruth. Thank you all. Carly, as always, thank you and this thank amazing you. space you've created. Thank you for having me as part of it and allowing me to share what it is that I feel is really the the strongest or the, the foundational way of changing our viewpoint of ourselves in humanity. We are fucking worthy and it's time we realize and embody that truth, you know? Yeah. Powerful stuff. Thank you. Thank you all. And I'll speak to you all soon. Much bye, love. everyone. Bye, bye, bye. 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 bye.